what, what the mate is talking about. Yeah. What's up, family? Kenneth Walker, the man who was inside of the apartment the night that Brianna Taylor was mercilessly murdered by the police, spoke in detail to Gail King about the incident. He said that that night started like any other night. He said they watched a movie and they were in bed and they heard a bang at the door loud bang. Startled, they ask who it is as they're both up trying to get dressed to see who's at the door. Uh, he says that the door comes off the hinges, he fires a shot. The police unload, they blast over 20 rounds into the house and Breonna Taylor gets shot multiple times. He said that he was actually holding her hands throughout the ordeal because she got down, but apparently she didn't get down low enough. Anyway, he says that he calls 911. First, he calls his mother. She tells him to call 911. He calls 911. Some people say, why is he calling 911? It's the police. Well, he didn't know it was the police. So he calls 911 for help. Then he calls Breonna Taylor's mother and tell her what had happened. He still don't know that Breonna Taylor is dead. Then he says he hears noises outside and he realizes, you know, it's the police. He opens the door and they come in on him. Now, this is not the police that did the shooting. This is the 911 response, so to so say. They approach him with a barking dog and they're barking orders. Get down, show me your hands. He says, cold, he's barefoot. He's dragged down the street. I think he said it was raining. Uh, it was wet. The ground was wet. In any event, he said that they went down the road and they stopped and an officer got out of an unmarked and walked up to his window and said, this was a bit a big misunderstanding. Um, and he said his officer was a lot more cordial than the others were. He got to the station, they took the handcuffs off, allowed him to walk around, use the restroom. And he made a good point. He said, they don't take the cuffs off of people who just shot police officers. So he said, he's not even sure that he actually hit a police officer. He said, they said he did, but he's not sure. I take his word. In fact, I'll go out on a limb and say he didn't shoot one of the police officers. Because had he shot one of the police officers, that would have been their justification, definitely, to take him all the way out. And even if they didn't take him all the way out, they definitely would have used that against him to try to build their case stronger. That's, what, that's the reason why they dropped those charges. At one point, Kenneth tells Gail King that one of the responding officers asked him, was he hit? When he told him no, he said, the cop said, that's unfortunate. So I'm looking at Gail King and I'm saying to myself, she's probably thinking, yeah, that is unfortunate. You know, because Gail King does not have a good record with black males. She is very good at her attack against black males. But this time, she actually seemed to be on the brother's side. I'm thinking to myself, what's gotten into her? Is that a clone? Anyway, he went on to say, 
if he hadn't lived, the world might not know Breonna Taylor. I agree. That would have been just another case of black people being murdered by the police and they would have put their little spin on it and it would have been over. The thing I think that kept this case alive, number one, is Kenneth Walker survived. Uh, number two is Kenneth Walker was a licensed gun owner, clean record. Breonna Taylor had a clean record and she was an essential worker. So they didn't fit the profile. They didn't fit that little profile, the little narrative that like, they love to spin about. You know, you know, these are like eyesores in the community. They didn't fit that profile. So because they lived good lives, clean lives, people rallied behind them, starting with the family. And that thing gained legs and it just took off and it exposed the Louisville Metropolitan Police Department for what they are, for what the citizens of Louisville has always been saying about them. Very corrupt. Oh yeah, corrupt to the core. Salute to this dude. Dude, I listening to dude talk. I mean, the dude, you could just still, you could feel his pain. It's a cold game, man. It's cold. He's walked in that house and just gunned that woman down in our own house. And then this buck dancing attorney general for Kentucky. Let him walk. He had an opportunity to do the right thing and get some justice for his people. And instead, he chose to be a seller. He chose to be that type of Negro that Harriet Tubman would have downed on sight. Man, Daniel Cameron and all the officers involved in the shooting and the subsequent cover-up. Your mama should be embarrassed and your daddy should have pulled out. No more talk. What, what the ladies talking about? <laughs>